Hi guys, today we'll be painting a Stormcast Liberator. This miniature was free with issue 75 of White Dwarf magazine. I highly recommend picking it up guys, I think it only cost me £2.40, which is a bargain considering you get a really nice miniature with it as well. We're going to be painting the Liberator start to finish. Some of the footage has been sped up for time purposes. Hopefully by the end of it you'll get a good idea of how I work start to finish on the Liberator giving it a, a nice tabletop standard finish. So go grab yourself a nice hot drink or maybe even a nice ice cold beer and we'll get started. The Liberators come on a 40mm base and they stand a good head and shoulders taller than a regular Space Marine. Just trimming off all the excess nubs, I'll tidy them up with a hobby knife and then come back in with some sanding sticks just to smooth them all out. using the old lighter trick to get the glue to start flowing again. I cut the ends off the cocktail sticks and then glue the head and the shield on. And if you just sing quickly there, I've drilled loads of holes into an old piece of wood so I can place all my spare parts on. using regular PVA glue undiluted. Thank you. 
ballast or gravel mix if you will is a mixture of GW's gravel, some sand from the beach, some woodland scenics gravel that I've all mixed together. I like to add the gravel a bit at a time so I can get the right kind of feel for the base. I add some more PVA glue and then I'm going to add a few larger rocks. Seal in the gravel mix with a watered down PVA glue mix. This is to make sure that the gravel on the top won't come off. Here I'm using my new Awata Eclipse HPCS. It's spraying out the primer absolutely beautifully guys. I'm going to be using Vallejo's Liquid Gold Ranger paints to airbrush. Now I've got to be honest guys, they can be a little bit finicky to spray out of the airbrush, but if you've been airbrushing for a while it shouldn't be no problem really. I'm painting really slowly here guys, only releasing a little bit of paint at a time. I want to make sure I've got a nice, even, smooth coverage because if you blow out the paint here guys, you're really going to make that armour look, for want of a better word, pretty nasty.
I'm highlighting all the armor panels now for Leo's liquid gold series old gold paint so all of the copper has been left behind in the recesses of the armor panels and on the top surface of the panels they're getting hit with the old gold color Airbrushing large surfaces are so much quicker than using a traditional paintbrush but still take your time with it guys if you want a nice result just add that gold just to those top surfaces. I thin the lead belt today in one to one with life colours thinner. I really love the look of Games Workshop Screamer Pink. It looks absolutely fantastic on the handles of swords and in this case a hammer. When painting I always turn the mini around to get the best possible angle to paint the part of the mini. Sorry that sometimes I'm filming out of shot but I find this is the best way to help alleviate mistakes. Thin the royal blue colour down 75% life colour thinner to 25% royal blue. I mentioned a moment ago about thinning down the royal blue, it's even more crucial you do this for the shield. I thin it down and it takes about three layers of paint to get a nice even coverage but it's worth it in the end when the result is a nice smooth even flat surface.
I use a lot of paint control you'll see on my thumb where I twist the bristles to get a nice sharp point and also control how much paints on the bristles I do this a lot with the fine detail work that you can see that I'm doing on the separated joints in the armor panels I've got to be honest guys, I'm a huge fan of the Games Workshop base range. Now I've not tried most of the range, but the base paints that I've tried so far give great coverage and they thin really well also. Again, if you can look, I've rolled the bristles of the brush into a nice fine tip and I'm just catching all the edges of the gold armour just to highlight those panels and make things really pop. I'm using good old null oil here to add some shading to the handles of the weapons and to the hammer. I'm also adding null oil to the raw blue as well. I'll go back in with raw blue afterwards to touch it up and just to leave subtle shading behind. I'm using Games Workshop's old Cryphone Sepia here but you can use the newer one which is Seraphim Sepia I believe. It's important to note here that I'm not actually washing the miniature, I'm just putting the Gryphone Sepia into all of the recesses and then I'm mopping it up with some water on any areas that I don't want the Gryphone Sepia. The reason I do it like this is I want the gold to still pop, if you wash the whole miniature it would really dull down the metal. I'm using a very fine brush here, I believe it's a triple naught Winsor & Newton series 7 and I'm just hitting the very extreme edges with Vallejo's Model Air Steel. It's really important whilst doing this that you're very careful with how much you add because otherwise you'll spoil the look of the gold. I 
I washed all the screamer pink with the null null and it really dulled it down. So now on the raised surfaces I'm just touching them back up with screamer pink. Again, just adding very subtle highlights with Vlaus Model Air Steel. Before using white to highlight the lightning flashes, I use light grey as a base I've unfortunately not filmed myself painting the white but after the light grey I go over the lightning flashes with Leo Model Air White. Highlighting the extreme edges of the hammer, it's called hard edge highlighting and it really helps the, pa the hammer to look a little bit more realistic and to pop. Painting the base really quick and dirty here, straight out the pot with a Rhinox hide. I'm using more of an overbrush than a dry brush and you can see that the brush is fairly wet. It's so that I can cover most of the surface. Using Argrax Earthshade here, I'll let it pool in all the recesses. It's gonna add really nice tonal variations. Oh dear, I'm at it again guys. I 
you'll find it really easy to paint the sides of bases by just angling the brush to the side you can do it in one sweep in motion and not worry about hitting the painted top games workshops highlands tufts are a bit pricey at eight pounds i think but i really like them i like the look that they add to the model Just add in the finishing touches of plastic glue to put the last two parts together. And we're all finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this video guys and if you have please tickle the like button and also share this among friends it really helps and I'll catch you in the next one.